Hi everybody, welcome to Wild Creative and Confident, a video interview series where you can learn from the most inspiring industry leaders on how you can use your passion and your creativity to design the life and business of your dreams. I'm your host, Sarah Marie Thompson from wildandcreative.com, and today I have a special guest, Alex Tooby. Did I say that right? Tubi? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Alex Tubi is with us. She's an Instagram marketer, influencer, and mentor with a background in graphic design and communications coupled with her love of social media. Alex has been able to hone in on what it takes to truly succeed on the number one visual social network, Instagram. So this is going to be really interesting for so many of you because I know that ev- most people love Instagram if you're, if you're creative, visual. Alex has not only grown her following to 375,000 loyal people, but she has helped many other entrepreneurs reach similar milestones. While those numbers may seem out of reach for most people, Alex boils it down to a simple science anyone can take advantage of. So welcome. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Yeah, and what an awesome story I feel like you have because – you said that you did, you, you've told me before that you have come from a little bit more of a social media background, right? Can you just uh, explain to us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, my cats might walk past the screen a couple of times here, but um, yeah, that's right. I used to do um, social media consulting, so I knew I wanted to work in social media, but I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't have that specialty yet. So I was helping people with their Twitter and their Google Plus and Instagram and everything. And then, you know, it kind of dawned on me that I really enjoyed Instagram the most, like you said, because it really takes that creative spin. Like it, it's very visual. Um, it's all about, you know, high quality visuals and creativity. It, exactly. So, um, yeah, I decided that that was kind of my thing and I wanted to be more of a specialist rather than a generalist. So I just kind of took that leap and now here I am. Why Instagram do you think, like, I know you said that it's creative, but do you think it's that whole thing? Like, you know, a picture says a thousand words. Um, that definitely has something to do with it for sure. Um, I personally have found that like Instagram is the best platform to create, um, relationships with your followers and your audience. Like I feel like, you know, Facebook and Twitter are more like, here's my link, come check out my website kind of stuff. Whereas Instagram is more personal. You're sharing like a bit of your life by showing this creative side of you. So, um, yeah. Totally. And I, I know, I remember when I got back on or got onto Instagram, I felt like it was a little bit of a different vibe than Facebook or anything else, because I felt like I could almost be a little bit more personal, like you said before, yeah. right? Like it, it kind of, it kind of is that allowing to just be like, this is my life in pictures. Mm-hmm. And then you find the people who like that or are similar to you and they like the same things. And then, you know, later on down the line, when you decide say, you know, I have a program or a product or a service, they're already on board. So have you always been a very creative an inspired individual like ever since you were little yeah absolutely um and I think that that kind of actually stems from my dad who was he was kind of like an inventor like he was always coming up with new business ideas and like things we could create and he was always building and whatnot and um he actually you know introduced my brother and I to our first computer and you know graphic programs like Corel Draw which is like so old thinking about (laughs) um But yeah, so I, you know, he worked in print and signage, so I helped him out on a bunch of jobs when I was younger, and then I ended up um, studying graphic design and print, and I worked in a lot of print shops actually before I kind of, you know, took the leap into entrepreneurship. So yeah, I've definitely been creative from the beginning. So you have basically, you know, developed a very strong, a few strong um, names on Instagram. I don't think have just one handle do you you have a few no I have three and then I have like a personal one which is funny because I have like you know 200 followers or something like yeah. that's just yeah my own personal account but so, um did you always think that you did you always think that deep down that you would be somewhere like you are now like you have a it was a pretty interesting career right you're helping people which I'm sure you love but also you're being creative every day and it's cool whatever you're doing it's cool right yeah <laughs> um you know I never thought that I would be here saying I'm an Instagram marketer and influencer um but I did know that like I needed to work for myself at some point. Um, I was always, no matter what job I had, honestly, I was always like doing something on the side, like trying to figure out an exit strategy. Um, so yeah, so I definitely knew that one day I would kind of be running my own business. Um, 
what that was specifically was unclear a lot of the times, but um, yeah, I'm definitely happy to have found this now. Um, and who knows what the future holds, right? Like, you know, things change. So maybe I'll grow and grow from this and lead into something else at some point. Totally. What, what do you, how do you think you've taken like your passion for life and business to a level that's different than, than a lot of people? I mean, yes, numbers speak for themselves, but I mean, just the way that you are operating on Instagram, because there's so many people on Instagram, right? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's just about finding your thing and Instagram's very, um, it's about being specific and being really focused. Like you'll find that the most popular accounts are the ones that have one clear focus and that's all they offer. And the reason why they're successful is because they're kind of like filling a void for someone. Right. So, you know, I have this account, um, men in coffee, like we talked about. And you know, when someone comes there, they see both good looking men and they see coffee and that's why it works. So that if I just, somebody needs that day, right? They just need <laughs> those pictures <laughs> right? Good morning going. So, you know, if I just put up a picture of, you know, my meal last night, it just wouldn't transfer. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that's why it works on Instagram. Do you find that that is probably one of the biggest keys for success on Instagram is not to just be all like willy nilly with what you're posting. It's definitely to be targeted to a specific subject. Absolutely. Yeah. I would definitely say that's behind, you know, whatever it is that you're sharing, your visuals need to be high quality. That would be number one. And then the second would having, would be having a focus and, you know, sticking to that. You're thick and thin. <laughs> what would you say your biggest achievement has been when it's really come to personal power, like within yourself and understanding yourself to the point where you've got to ease and flow in your business? Um, you know, I think that it probably comes down to like deciding on doing things that make me happy and doing things that don't make me happy. So, you know, in the beginning, when I came into the entrepreneur scene, everyone was, you know, doing coaching services and stuff like that. And I was like, well, you know, I can be a coach. I can coach people how to do Instagram. And so I put up a, you know, one-on-one -on -one service and I worked with a few people and it just didn't really serve me the way that I thought it was going to. And it wasn't that I didn't like working with the people. It was just the fashion that it was in. So I just decided to pull that. Um, people ask me for it all the time. And I just say, you know, I'm not available because it just didn't make me happy. So I think that once you decide to only do things that serve you and make you happy, then that's when that ease and flow really starts to happen. When did you make that ch or, or what happened where you made that choice? Because it's so easy for people to go into the quote, quote, coaching, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, like you said, you get asked for it all the time, but so what do you really call yourself now? Like, do you work with people? You don't work with people on one-on-one, -on -one, but you work, you do like courses, group programs. Yeah. So I started doing the courses and I found that, you know, I really preferred doing that. And now it's also a matter of like having time. Like I want to put my time into creating more courses. So I, that means I don't have time to teach you one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. but that's kind of why I call myself a mentor because I guide you, you know, I'll teach you what you need to know via this course right. um, rather than being like a coach that really like builds you up from the ground up and, you know, helps you all the way through kind of thing. So that's why I say I'm a mentor. Cool. Can you give, I don't, I don't want to dive into your course details, of course, because that's what they're all about, but can you give us a few key pointers for those that are watching, you know, for Instagram? Because um, there must be so many people that have Instagram accounts and, you know, they have a good business and maybe they have like a thousand followers or something like that, but it's stagnant. Right. You know? But they're posting great photos. Maybe they're, you know, posting inspiring quotes and tips and all that kind of stuff, but it's not going anywhere. Just by saying that, what would you kind of be like, okay, well, it's probably this. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's so many variables that go into it. Like we already said, you need to have high quality images. You need to have a good focus. Um, consistency is a huge thing. Like if you're just showing up here and there, then your growth is going to be really slow. But if you find that your follower growth is really stagnant, it's probably because you're just waiting for people to come to you. Hmm. So while that will happen slowly, it's better to go out there and engage with your potential audience. So that means liking and commenting and maybe even following the accounts that you think might be interested in you. So being more proactive in it will definitely increase your, your rate of growth. Yeah. The whole post and run thing, right? Like right. you, you kind of have to really do um, connect with those like-minded people out there in your community uh, because maybe they'll share your stuff too. Right. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Um, 
how have you personally taken being creative mm-hmm. opposed to competitive when it comes to the online world? Because I'm sure you have a lot of competition out there. Right? Oh, <laughs> you know? We all do. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I think that creative creativity is really, you know, what sets you apart from your competition. So by really honing in on like your look and your brand and what it is you want to offer, um, nobody can replicate that. So even if they come into the scene and it's happened to me, like, you know, the Instagram marketing scene is very new. So there's lots of people coming in offering courses. And every time I see someone, I'm kind of like, Oh crap, like somebody new, but you know, nobody can be me and nobody can kind of deliver the content the way that I do. Mm -hmm. So I think as soon as you have that mindset, then competition kind of comes irrelevant. What would you say to people that are having trouble with being authentic in the sense that, um, you know, it's, I mean, it would be very easy for someone to just say, oh, I'm going to start an Instagram page about coffee and guys. And that's what they call it, right? I mean, yeah. that's not the original. That's not yours, of course, sure. but anybody could do that. What do you say, what would you say to people or what would you help um, in mentoring them to really come out with their, their own voice? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's totally fine to find inspiration. Like, you know, nothing that I've done is, you know, brand new. It's always been inspired by something, right? So I think that you just really need to be honest with yourself and say, you know, is this my like, is this coming from inside of me or am I being influenced by somebody else? So, um, and you know, you can do guys and coffee, but you got to put like some kind of spin on it. Right. So maybe your images are, you know, different, or maybe the way you write your captions is different or something like that. I think you just need to like, you know, make a point of just trying to put your own unique spin on it. Because when that person who does own the original one comes and sees it, they're not going to support you. But no. <laughs> if, you do it, if you do it a little bit differently, then sure, I'll support you. Like, why not? Let's do a shout for shout or whatever, right? Yeah. But if you're just blatantly copying me, then you'll probably get a block. And <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think just, you know, being honest and asking yourself, is this coming from inside of me or am I being influenced by someone else? Totally. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell us about, you mentioned about captions. Like I wanted to ask you a little bit about Instagram. So are captions important? Is, is hashtagging important? <laughs> yes, both are. Um, we can start with hashtagging because um, hashtagging is like, if you're not using hashtags, then you're not really reaching anyone, especially in the beginning stages when your following is small. You need hashtags to basically give you that exposure. So Um, a big problem that people have is they choose hashtags that are too generic. Mm -hmm. So if you use the hashtag like happy, which probably has like 40 million posts associated with something, um, it's really unlikely that you're going to target your ideal audience. So I always tell people to choose hashtags that are very specific and descriptive of their business. Um, and that way anyone who comes to you through that hashtag is more likely to be interested in the content that you're sharing. Um, And then when it comes to captions, uh, it's different for everyone. Like, you know, there'll be days when you don't really have anything to say and like a one line might work. Um, For me, I do quite long captions on my actual business page because I'm trying to add value. So Mm -hmm. um, for me, if I add value in that caption, then, you know, that's going to relate to a follower or a click on my link or whatever. Right. So um, yeah, it really depends on your audience because if you're like, a comedian just having a one line humorous joke might work for you. Right. So it's trial and error for sure. Back to hashtags for a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are, you're posting something and you put in happy and it says 40 million, right. 40 million hashtags, or you put in something that says, um, make yourself happy. And maybe, maybe it has less, or maybe you even put in one and it says like 500 and you're like, well, that's not very much. What are people Mm -hmm. looking like? What should you be doing? Like putting it in the lower kind of category or the mid range? Yeah, I think there's definitely like a sweet spot. Um, So I would recommend like 500 seems quite low. Like it's probably there's not that many new pictures. So you're probably not going to get that much from it. Um, I'd say anywhere from like 2000 up to like 300,000 is good for the average user. Um, 
you know, we can get a little bit more technical. I don't know if you've noticed that there's top posts now um, mm -hmm. when you search up a hashtag. So like nine pictures are selected to be the top in this tag. Um, and if you have a strong enough following, you can get to the top for something like happy. So depending on where you are, like in your Instagram journey, if you will, um, you can start kind of pushing those limits and using larger hashtags. But for the general person, I'd cap it at about 300,000. For people that don't know about Instagram, because I feel like with any social media, unless you really dive into it, like you don't really know like all the ins and outs of it. Yeah. Um, you know, on like the homepage on Instagram, how do you get onto that homepage for people that, that don't know? Like, is it just uh, a certain amount of likes within a certain amount of time you get on that homepage feed or? Um, it actually used to be different. So it used to be like that. It was like, if your picture was really popular, we'll put you on that page. And it actually used to be called the popular page. Now it's called the explore page and it's different for everyone. So it's what you see on that page is based on the pictures that you've been liking and interacting with and the people like who you follow, who they're interacting with. So my explore page is going to be different than yours. Interesting. Um, but it is a really valuable page actually because if you're consistently interacting with your ideal audience, then you're going to see more of your ideal audience on the explore page. So it's a good place to find more people that might be interested in what you're doing. I've had a friend who is a travel writer and she takes the most amazing travel photos. She actually got um, featured on Instagram for their feature of the week or something oh, like wow. that. Nice. What, what do you have to do to, to, to have that? Instagram is so hush hush about all of these things. Um, I don't know the answer for sure. Um, I've heard that if you like interact with Instagram, so Instagram does do like a weekly, you know, thing where they're like, use this hashtag or post this type of content or something like that. So if you're right. consistently um, following what they're doing, then you have a better chance, I think. But um, yeah, the, the actual answer of how you get noticed by Instagram is very mysterious to me. So um, yeah, I think, you know, once you reach a certain part, like a certain level where lots of people are sharing your content, you're very popular, then maybe, you know, that helps. I'm not really sure, but just keep doing your thing and maybe one day it'll happen. <laughs> With your, with your, um, Instagram account, um, men and coffee. Um, that, yeah, my business one is actually Insta with Alex. So that's where okay. I share like tips about Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And, and your it's men and coffee. Yes. Where do you get your pictures of the men and coffee? Are you tro like strolling the streets <laughs> downtown in your city and just, you know, looking for the Hawkeye <laughs> or, or what are you doing? <laughs> um, no, luckily, I mean, well, that would be fun in its own way, but luckily, no, I don't. Um, the page is basically all user generated content. So I started the hashtag men and coffee. So I encourage anyone who um, comes to my page, it says use the hashtag men and coffee to be featured. So okay. about like 27,000 pictures tagged um, men and coffee. So I basically just go through those um, and choose the best one. Um, okay. I also get emailed directly and sent DMs and that kind of stuff too. But yeah, it's just people want to be on the page. So yeah, uh, you really don't have to do that much work anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, it just all comes to you. That's great um, for engagement as well, right? You know, you know, introducing a hashtag and, you know, inviting people to come into your world, essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. The brand wouldn't be as big as it is without that, like, hashtag surrounding it. You should probably consider, like, a calendar. <laughs> I, oh, think that would probably I have, be I have. Um, actually, I'm planning to make a coffee table book, so. That would be amazing. Um, I like the idea of the calendar, but, like, I feel like people only buy calendars in, like, January, so I want it to kind of be something that I could sell all the time, and I actually already have contacted a ton of people, asked for their permission to be in this book and stuff like that. So it's in the making. Um, yeah, you guys will definitely hear about it when it comes out. <laughs> no, it's a great idea because it's kind of like, it's an oddball item, right? And I think right. that the whole coffee table book thing should like come back. <laughs> totally, right? Like, and that's kind of how I thought about it. I was like, okay, well, my audience wants men and coffee. Like, how can I give that to them in like a form that they could purchase? And I can't really send like a man to your doorstep because yeah, you know, trafficking <laughs> is <laughs> kind of frowned upon. But the next best thing would be like a physical copy of it. So 
Um, yeah, and then I have such a big following that realistically the profit margin is really, really large. So I'm excited to kind of see what happens with that. I, I'm excited for that. that. That would be awesome. What would you suggest to the people that are watching today and, and learning your story? Mm -hmm. um, like, What is a method that's really worked for you over the past few years that can help other people inspire them to, to really go with their soul's true calling when they're trying to start their own business or do their own thing? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to kind of sound a little cheesy, but I think just following your heart, like I did with my business, you know, you know, Twitter and all those other platforms weren't serving me. So I just decided to drop them and do what was making me happy. And I think on top of that, it's about, you know, taking risks and not being afraid to fail and, you know, trying new things because you never know what it is that's going to actually work the best for you. So without trying it, then you know, you'll never know. So definitely take risks and don't be afraid of failure because all entrepreneurs fail at some point and that's just part of it. What is your thought on, because I remember at the beginning of our chat here, you said that, you know, you've done a lot of things and mm -hmm. you kind of always had like exit strategies if they didn't work and I'm sure right. you used many of them. Mm -hmm. What has been your thought on if you are, if someone is working on something for, you know, say, a good amount of time yeah. and they're having great successes in something, but maybe they're not finding the success monetarily. What do you kind of think about that? Something like I like to ask entrepreneurs. I'm um, sorry. Can you restate that? Yeah. So, yeah. So if someone is, is doing well in something, they're, they're following their heart. Like yeah. even say, say like yourself, um, you know, they're getting a huge following. They're great, getting great interaction. They're feeling great about it. Right. But maybe they're not, you know, um, they're putting themselves out there, but they're not making money right. that they're really wanting. Uh, right. Would you suggest kind of like a shift in, in their direction of what they're going um, doing or? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you have to leave like the niche or the industry behind because that's obviously what they like to do. I think you just need to start thinking about like what other options are there. So, you know, for me, I started out coaching, but I didn't really like that. So now I'm into the info products and the online courses. So maybe you can just kind of like change your tra trajectory a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe I need to offer a physical product or, you know, maybe I need to start an online course or whatever it is. So, um, and you know, if you can't come up with that yourself, then definitely, joining you know Facebook groups or support groups or a mastermind or something like that where somebody else can kind of give you insight because um, even for me like I wasn't really planning on making info courses I was planning on just selling specific services but my brother actually does um, he's big on YouTube and he creates ebooks and stuff like that and he was like you need to make an info course and then as soon as I did and it was really successful I was like thank you for telling me to do that because otherwise I would have been grinding away so yeah. yeah so I think you know if you can't if you don't, if you're not sure just ask someone ask someone you trust and who you know wants the best for you when it comes to any social media but Instagram because you're a master we'll ask you. <laughs> Um, when you're trying to sell a course or when someone is trying to promote a product or something like that on Instagram, is there a special mm -hmm. way to do it? Or is there some kind of like tip that you can give people like a technique that is, um, you know, because they'll be doing all of their daily posts and it'll be that and then it'll be like, bam, a promotion, right? right. What's, what's the yeah. Um, well, like I said in the beginning, I feel like Instagram is about building relationships. So I think that you definitely need to focus on that before you ever sell anything. Um, because once people like, know, and trust you, that's when they want to buy from you. Right. So, um, you, you can promote on Instagram for sure. I would keep it like, you know, the 80, 20 rule where, you know, 80% of the time you're providing like free value. And then 20% of the time you're offering your product. But I do find that the best way to really do that is to lead them somewhere else. So lead them to your email list or to your Facebook group or somewhere else where you can provide them even more value before you offer them something. Like I think that selling products is definitely like, you, it's a time investment. You have yeah. to invest the time in nurturing that relationship with those people. And then when you offer the product, they're like way, way, way more likely to buy it. Right. So, um, yeah, I usually use the link in my bio on Instagram to send them to a freebie or to my Facebook group or something where I can nurture it a little bit more before I offer them something. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because Instagram is tricky. It's not like Facebook, right? You can't just put up like 10 links that people can just click on right there. You have right. to actually 
tell people what to do <laughs> in a sense, right? Well, that's a really good point that you say that because a lot of people will put like their website link, but they'll never say anything about it. Like nobody, like we see links all day long. So you have to give me a reason why I should click yours. So right. by saying, you know, if you come to my website, then I'll teach you this and this, or you'll get 15% off or whatever it is. Like there needs to be an incentive behind the link click. And how important is a bio on Instagram? Definitely important. I feel like, you know, when somebody lands on your page, they need to know what you're offering or what the purpose of your account is right away. If they don't, they're going to like not be as, um, like involved with it. They're going to be like, I don't, I don't know what this is. (laughs) Don't just have like 15 emojis <laughs> that, like, that like that's not going to tell people what you're all about <laughs> sure. I mean you can use emojis they definitely help to kind of break up the content but you definitely want to you know like introduce yourself what is it that you do where can they contact you and then kind of an incentive to click that link um, below the bio yeah no, those are great tips. I know I don't want to give away too much because I'm sure that, um, you know, they're part of your course as well as many, many other things. But, um, you know, just like simple things like that, people are probably going to get a lot out of this because, you know, it's just things that don't really come up in conversation and then they're not wondering why their Instagram account isn't doing so For well, sure. right? Yeah. Um, so where can people find you? Like give us all the places that people can find you and follow you. Um, okay. So number one, I'm on Instagram at Insta with Alex. So that's where I like, I post daily, um, tips. They're mostly Instagram tips. Sometimes there's like business tips and kind of like inspirational kind of entrepreneurial stuff there, but yeah, definitely follow me at Insta with Alex. Um, and then I also have a Facebook group, so it's called the Instagram marketing mastermind. Um, and we have almost 3,800 people in there and it's basically just a place for someone to come and, you know, if they need a question answered or they want feedback on their account or something like that, um, lots of knowledgeable people in there, including myself. Um, so there's that. And then my website is just alex bcom Cool. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, well, do you have any other little giveaway or anything that you'd like anybody to know about? For sure. Um, yeah, I am releasing a free e-course. So it's going to kind of go over some of the stuff that we talked about today, but there's going to be, you know, written content. There's going to be video and workbooks involved and it's totally free. Um, it's going to be about five to seven days long and it's all delivered by email. So I've sent you that link. So I'm sure that you can paste it somewhere, but, um, yeah, Yeah, so that'll, that'll be definitely up by your bio for everybody that, um, wants to, to follow you. And that course I'm assuming would be just so beneficial. I mean, if you've got anything out of what me and Alex have been talking about, I mean, I would just imagine that your e-course would be filled with, with other um, golden techniques that you can use on Instagram. Um, what do you have in the upcoming future that we should know about any course launches or anything like that this year? Um, yeah, actually. So I do have the one course right now, which is called infamous to influential. And that one is specifically focused on growing an engaged following. Um, because I feel like that's the foundation for any business owner on Instagram. You need to have the right people following you before you'll be able to generate any type of income. So that's what that course is about. However, this year I am building another course that's more comprehensive. So it's going to cover, you know, Um, content creation, um, hashtags, obviously, um, you know, working with other people, collaborations, building your email list, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm creating a more comprehensive one, which I don't have a release date at this point, but um, sometime this year. Very cool. Well, I mean, everybody definitely follow Alex on all of her handles and uh, check out what she's doing on her website. And I have one more question for you before we go. Yeah. What is it that makes you wild, creative, and confident? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I honestly think that it's just something I was born with. Like, I was just made to be, I was made to, like, break boundaries and do things that, you know, my parents would rather I didn't do. Like, I'm sure, you know, I think that a lot of people get stuck into, you know, what society wants you to do. They want you to go to school and get a job and climb the corporate ladder and whatever. And I think that I'm just, I was just born to break rules and say no. And um, yeah. so that's really it. Um, and it's worked out so far. So uh, I'm going to keep going with it. Good answer. You're born with it. I was just yeah. born with it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this. And um, I'm sure a lot of people got a lot 
a lot out of um, what you're talking about today. So cool. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. And we will see you all again. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. bye.